ever afraid of something. When your brain picks up a human behavior from someone else, and your brain starts to remember how that made you feel when you were acting that way. And that's how your brain gives you signs of being careful. Like, let's say someone's acting crazy, um, aggressive, throwing things, um, maybe even any type of, like, a normal usual thing. Like, for me, I experience, uh, people who don't come forth, but I still feel comfortable with them because they have done, you know, things to me to show me that they're out of place to show me that I should that I that made me afraid but I should fight my fear and and I'm gonna name the the situation so that way I can say you know where we pick up what makes us afraid and how to get away from that um I was at church, it was a Christian Spanish church, like I said on here, or I'm gonna say on here, because I might post this video before the other one. They all took turns moaning. It was a Christian church, and I knew this church. I grew up there when I was on my 20s. I, I was there for the longest. Um, I, they were like my family. And I remember hearing them take turns moaning. Now, the reason why I talk like this is, well, my background is Jesus. I grew up reading the Bible and Jesus, Moses, all of them. Mainly Jesus, he grew up, his teachings, not saying that I like the Bible. I don't like it as a weapon used against every person. Um, Because people don't know what it says. They misinterpret it. But if you go and look at science and wisdom which is learning through experience, you're going to see that people are using that against even their own lives, especially Christian people, um, which is why the church is so empty and we don't see miracles. But Jesus would use example. He would be like a scientist of nature, a scientist of wisdom. If you read the Bible properly, you're going to pick that up and you won't go to no religion. You'll know that you have a light in you. And unfortunately, because of human teachings, you have a darkness. It doesn't exist, but you yourself, because you believe it, it exists. And because others were taught that, so now we must fight that teaching. Um, so Jesus came, you know, and he taught through experience, through things, through nature. Because nature is us. We are everything. We are everywhere. We are energy. That's what Jesus was trying to say. That's why he used, like... Things like nature, he used a lot of force, not because that's all there was, but that's because we're one force as well. And nowadays, you could even use technology because who created? You could use anything as a metaphor. Or uh, uh, what he used to use was parabolas. I don't know how to say that in English, but it was like um, examples that aren't direct to the human eye, but he would speak in parables. There we go. But are there, if you think about wisdom, if you think about what it does and how it functions, and you could relate it to your functioning. But anyway, so back to these Christians. They took turn moaning. One of the ladies took, it was five women. While the pastor was speaking at a church service, it was actually a Bible reading. And... They took turn. There was only five women there, including me and the the one, the pastor, which I known him, and all of these people I knew them for years, except for one of the old ladies that were there, and they were all elderlies. They were all older than me, so I look at their face because sometimes people are possessed. You know, in these churches, they believe in possession. I believe that possession is when you are someone else's, when someone takes your rights and you become their possession. Therefore, they could control you. What is possession? Being in control. That is possession. That's the rational possession for me. Not demons, not all this other weird shit. No, you become some some thoughts, possessions that were increased by their belief to you so they can maneuver you at their favor. That is possession. So what happened at this church service was beyond crazy. Beyond crazy. They started taking turns moaning, and you could hear it. 
because I wasn't even next to them and I could hear them. We were uh, spread it around the room. And I remember the first lady moaning, she was in front of me. So I looked at her face to see, was she okay? Is she hurting? But she was moaning like a cat in heat. And when I saw her face, I was like, nah, she's doing some weird shit. And I moved because she wasn't she wasn't possessed. She wasn't doing nothing. She just went straight to pretending that she was listening to the service. Like a robot. And then I moved from there. I pretended to use the bathroom. I moved from there. I sat somewhere else. Then the pastor's wife starts moaning. And remind you, I've known this lady for years. She's an aggressive person. She pretends that she cares about people she's always trying to lose weight and talks about that but then discriminating me for being skinny and telling me that i needed to gain weight that that wasn't right always making me feel comfortable about it saying it in an uncomfortable way and i remember that day she starts moaning she moaned the most she moaned like three times i kept looking at her like a cat in heat she moaned like three times i looked at her straight face and I was like, are these people discriminating me? Like, are they acting like they can do this to me now because of my position in life? Because like I said, I've been walked on. My mom told me she's not going to let me out of this situation. She's talking to people about me. So I automatically made it into, and my mom knows these people. She also went to that church. So I was like, "They're this is degrading. Like them doing this for no reason and then the lady in the back took a turn. The lady in front of me again took a turn. They all took turns moaning. And I was like, okay, this is in possession. This is this church. They're doing this intentionally. What were their intentions? Whether It was evil. They say they believe in Jesus. They say they believe in everything. But telling you these people are evil, it don't matter what their intentions were. I believe that that's disgusting because her husband was up there and... You're moaning in front of your husband. You're moaning and you're doing all these weird things. They took me as a joke. That's another thing that is disrespectful. That to them it might have meant nothing. But to me I was disconnected from what was going on. That's why I went to that church. Because I was getting hurt by my family. So when I went to that church. I was looking for the word of God to feel peace. And they did all this thing basically. And something in me directed it straight to his envy. They're doing it out of envy. They know your position. They know what you're going through because for sure they know what you're going through. Your mom said she was going to tell everybody, including the people that she knows, to not help you, to degrade you. And ever since I've been working on my music, this is what's been happening. My music keeps getting stolen. I keep looking for help. People keep stepping on me now on purpose because I am not normal to their eyes. And by the way, Jesus was also spoke as a negative light. Jesus, they said that he took out demons with a demon. This is in the Bible. Read your scriptures. Because I was lately, uh, recently talking to a guy, which I'm pretty sure my parents sent him. Um, he was he was so he was so salty about his Bible. He didn't even know his scriptures. He didn't know how contradicting it could be to read that Bible. And it says even in the Bible itself, if you don't read it with the Holy Spirit, which is talking about a light, thoughts that are free, thoughts that, you know, it doesn't include you. When they talk about something holy in a spirit, it's because it's felt, right? You don't see it, but it's felt. Is it real or not? God himself in the Bible said, why do you care more about me if you don't care about your uh, brother, your, your neighbor, who is there with you? And these are these Christians. They don't care about their neighbor. They don't care about them. Because they did it with me. They do it with a bunch of LGBT uh, people. And people, period, when they envy them. They don't want to help them. Or less, they, they, they're human, yeah. But there's some things they do intentional. Exactly what they did to me that day. They're humans. They make mistakes. But some things they do intentional. And God was telling me they know the, well, the light. Because I don't believe... I don't want to believe in the Bible. I want to believe in what Jesus, in what the Bible said. How could you say you love God? You never fucking seen him. It's in the scriptures. But you can't love your brother. You can't love yourself down here. And by yourself, I mean, Christians are going to say, oh, look, he, she or he, whatever the hell they want to call me. It's talking about how loving yourself. In the scriptures, it says you cannot love yourself. There is a way to love yourself, idiot. What, are you going to not take care of your vessel because that's loving yourself? When I speak of loving yourself, I mean processing yourself through thoughts of, is this right for me or not? Like Jesus did, speaking with wisdom, learning things by experience. 
But Christians hate me right now. I know they do. They hate my guts. My mother hates my guts right now because I'm fighting for the LGBT. I'm fighting to break the normal. Not even the LGBT. Forget LGBT. I'm fighting to break their normal. And they hate me. And they steal from me. Yet they hate from me. They say that my teachings are, are whack, that I'm whacked out, that I'm a Lucifer. But they steal my teachings because they 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 stolen stuff. You know, not my my wisdom, not my teachings, because fuck it, we're changing every day. This could this could apply for me today. This could apply for me years. This could one day not apply for me. This could apply for me sometime. This could because we're all learning, we're all developing. But the main thing is that we're healthy and we're safe. But the Christians forgot that they don't care about people. They care about their own needy ass freaking hearts and their fake God, because that is not God. The Christians they do not serve God. They serve themselves. They're the most selfish people. Another thing that I will teach, well, that I will talk about, not teach, I'm not fucking teachers, fuck teachers, that I will talk about because it's good to remind ourselves, you know, experience and shit, or else your story will be erased from you and you will believe anything. Um, another thing, sorry that I'm getting aggressive, I shouldn't scream, I shouldn't get aggressive, it's bad for my health, but... It's just that I recently went through this a couple of uh, days ago, um, a couple weeks ago. But the Christians are hypocrites because they say, okay, they say the LGBT doesn't enter. But look at the book of Enoch. Where makeup came from? Where did the makeup come from? Fallen angels that taught humans when the fallen angels fell in love with the women of this world. They broke the law of God. They broke his rules. He, they came down, they had sex with women, and then they taught these people about weapons. And they taught them about, you know, how to be seductive, how to how to use that power. Not to say it's bad, right? But that was taught by fallen angels. And the Christians still apply that. They apply that Christians now wear makeup, they wear jewelry, and all of this was fought, this all these teachings are taught by angels who disobeyed God. And then, because they taught human minds about weapons, and I'm guessing God saw that as humans don't know about this yet. And they taught it before, because God did want to teach us everything, but he wanted to teach us, I know he wanted to teach us everything. But at our capacity, like kids, you will not teach kids about weapons, right? They don't know. You would say that it exists, be careful with it. But because these weapons didn't exist, God didn't have to tell us that to be careful with it. He probably didn't want that for us. He probably just wanted us to live in peace and harmony. Just like he didn't want us to try the tree of, uh, you know, knowledge. Because he wanted us to live in peace and harmony. He, he got us. He was protecting us. Like, some parents are with their kids. But somehow, I don't know. Like, I don't believe in the... I don't, like I said, I don't believe in the Bible. But I'm trying to make the best of it with what I experienced with my life. Because even in the Bible itself, God said this. God said this himself. How could you say that you love him? By love, you have to believe in something, right? You have to be close to something. How could you be close to God and you, you know, don't, you're not close with your with your people here, with the people you see. That's what God was trying to say. So that's what I'm trying to put first. Me. First me. Because if I don't know what hurts me again, I don't know what offends me. Because I lost a lot of moral values by being stepped on. And 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 in a bunch of different ways, degraded in a bunch of different ways. Um, if I don't care for my health, how could I care for someone else's? So that's what I'm trying to get back at. Like I said, I didn't even use the curse. I did. I I didn't. I didn't even talk in this matter. Uh, in this form, I used to talk. You know, like I'm not under stress. Like I'm peaceful. Like everything's chill. But I let a lot of family members do me harm, and there that was the first thing. And then after that, a bunch of people started getting used with what they were doing and doing shit to me too. And a bunch of people, even people in high authority, people in the industry that my family knows. So this is why I'm trying to take my voice back. I'm trying to get out of, pull myself out of it. Because family, not not everybody's good, not everybody's family, and that's something I learned that my mother, when she started envying my music, um, because she was the first person who told me that she didn't believe in my music. She said she hated it; it was ugly, and I still remember that day. Um, 
and it was a song for God. It was a it was Metro. That was a song I wrote for God, telling him that I will always follow him because those are my my old beliefs. Now I just believe that um I have to stay strong and believe there is a light there. We are energy and we travel. And we have to protect that as if it's our vessel as well. We can't just let people walk all over us. And we could feel other people's energy. But the best thing is not to be an empath. The best thing is to just not feel other people. And go by what you want. Because you only have one experience in this world. Go by what you want. Process that. And know how what will hurt you. And what wouldn't hurt you. And what you want. So you don't do it to others. That Because then we connect with people that have. This is what happens. Because we're energy. Then we meet people that want the same values. The same things. And we could. That's beautiful. We could connect with them. But if we don't see what hurts us, they're going to envy you. They're going to steal from you. You have to have some kind of moral rights to how to achieve your things. With me, I let people walk on me. I kept seeing people steal from me and say they love me. I kept seeing, I kept uh, dating uh, another thing that happened that I thought I should be with people and believe that I should be with people that... And I wasn't like that. I used to talk to a bunch of people and, and I wouldn't give nobody a chance unless I saw a commitment. And when I started talking to my family again, I thought, oh, well, I'm being stepped on because I should be, you know, more open. And what happened? I was more open in the wrong way to experiences that I wanted to have. Because obviously, people, not everybody wants good intentions with you. And you attract things as well. If people could see that you're you're easily stepped on, they would want to step on you too. To get what is yours. And that's what happened with me. Because you attract that, you keep attracting that same energy, not that you are that force, but because you are, you're saying you're the vulnerable force, people are going to keep stealing from you, and that's going to be your life. But if you stand up and you say, no, I have to stand up, there's a, a moral right, to, a moral way to, for, for me to fight this. And moral isn't always the same in every, you know, but like the, a peaceful way, a helpful way for you and the other person, even though they're bad people, but for the other person not to get away with what they're doing. Um, because as soon as you turn aggressive, because that's what they want out of you, as soon as you turn negative, because that's what they want, because the energy is negative, there's a dark energy that I believe we ourselves created that, because we did. Even to the Bible, according to the Bible, we created it. Um... We have to fight against it because it doesn't exist. That's not what we're here to, 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 to feel. We're here to feel our experience in the best way possible. Before the Christians start talking naively, by that I mean Adam and Eve. They're, you know, supposedly the fallen of man. That's what I'm referring to. But I don't believe that God didn't want us to know things. He wanted, it to know, he wanted us to know at our own capacity or he wanted us to be creators like him. Either way, we are creators like him. That's the main thing he created us to be. Um, angels don't cry like him. That's a different creation that he did. But we are closest to him because he cries. And we are here to experience emotions. If you ever talk to people, what are we always going through? Emotions. Because he created us in his image, but not fully in his image because we are not God completely we are closest to his image because when you talk about emotions that's what we're here to experience but we don't know what God looks like the Bible describes him in many different ways by many different people but we are created in his image why because we're, we're having emotional experience like him he cries and that's the closest thing to looking like someone else right when when you when you're friends with someone, the most thing that brings you closer to them, what is it? Their human experience that made them feel the most, you know, either vulnerable or strengthened by it. 